Trump did nothing or very little effectively to whip the Secret Service into shape, right? The, the degree of burnout from Trump's uh, travels, right, caused the Secret Service to lose employees faster than it could hire them, right? Uh, the United States Secret Service spent about $30 million to protect Trump Tower, where neither the president nor his family lived, right? The Secret Service was going broke protecting Donald Trump. Right? It, its financial problems could be attributed directly to the Trump administration, specifically to President Trump, who made decisions about the Secret Service without any concern for costs or consequences. Right? In his eight months, his first eight months as president, Donald Trump forced the Secret Service to shepherd him on his trips to his resorts for golf trips on 26 out of 30 weekends. His family members made 650 out-of-town trips. Right? So the United States Secret Service worked 12 times as many trips with Trump and his family as they had with Obama and his family. All right, Trump never took any notice of alarming bipartisan reports warning that Secret Service was an agency in crisis in desperate need of new blood to replace leadership that had grown stale. He didn't stale. He didn't heed the warnings that the Secret Service would continue to suffer and falter as the next administration ponied up hundreds of millions of additional dollars every year to add 280 more agents to replace its outdated technology and to revive its moribund training programs. So if uh, Trump's rally had inadequate security on Saturday, right, part of that could be blamed on decisions made in the Trump administration. For the final year of his presidency, Donald Trump requested a less than 1% increase in funds for the service. The uh, Secret Service promotion system was corrupt. It was basically based upon uh, who, who liked you rather than how good you were. There were few incentives for bosses to make tough choices or long-term planning. There's rapid turnover as people just burned out. It was often named the worst place in the federal government to work. All right, Trump saw the larger Secret Service as he did any other federal agency, another tool at his disposal, one that could help him achieve his personal and political goals. Trump was never much interested in the boring work of government. He didn't do anything to ensure the agency's long-term health. Instead, the employees of the Secret Service took a major hit for Trump rather than get the boost of money that the previous administration, the Obama administration, members of Congress had pledged the Secret Service, was stuck on the same hamster wheel at staff racing to keep up with Trump's jaunts. It's agents waiting months to get paid for their overtime. It's essential security repairs delayed yet again. Trump was dragging the Secret Service back and forth to his properties for his rounds of golf. There were pawns in a larger pattern with a lucrative payoff for Donald Trump. His travel forced the Secret Service, the Defense Department, and other federal agencies to take money out of their pockets to support the president's trips, and they handed over a significant portion of that to the Trump organization. All right, Trump was vacuuming up the money, not just of the Secret Service and other federal agencies that secured his trips, but for scores of Republican politicians, corporate VIT, VIP, special interest lobbyists, foreign, foreign delegations, all of whom flocked to following him, seeking an audience to curry his favor. Now, on the other hand, I think this book by a Washington Post reporter makes some questionable criticisms of Donald Trump. So apparently many of the black officers were angered by a suggestion by a white officer that the Secret Service use fire hoses to keep protesters away from the White House and to reduce the risk of a breach. And uh, the black employees hated that idea and said there's no legal justification for ever using high-pressure hoses on American civilians exercising their First Amendment right to protest. 